Hello everyone, this is me Arijit with a new video and in this video we are going to discuss about how you can use time input in Blink 2.0. So basically in the last video we have built this Wi-Fi extension board. Now as you can see in this board we have four sockets and these four sockets we can control individually using Blink 2.0. So basically using our smartphone or our web dashboard. Now in this video we are going to see how we can use a timer so that actually we can schedule all the sockets. So for example, maybe uh, among these four sockets, you want a particular socket to turn on at 10 p.m. and you want to turn it, uh, turn it off at maybe, uh, I don't know, 11 p.m., something like that. So you want to schedule it. You want to turn it on in a very particular time, turn it off in a very particular time. Also, maybe not just turning on, turning off, maybe you want to read a sensor data at a very particular time. So all these time related things where you have to set a very particular time and some tasks will be, some tasks will get happen in that time. So those kind of things, how you can do with Blink 2.0 that we are going to see in this video. So let's get started. Okay guys, so uh, we'll start with uh, set up in the project. Okay, now if you don't know how to use Blink or how like how to control relays with Blink, then please watch my previous video. In that video, I have shown you how you can use Blink, how to create a new project, how you can control relays and all that thing. And I have used Node MCU for the last project and in this project also we are going to use Node MCU. So if you don't know the basics, please watch the last video. And after you have watched that one, please then continue this video so you'll understand properly. So uh, at first I'll just log in into Blink.io. Now here, if I if you see my my devices, I have two devices. Uh, this is the Sparklers test. This device I have created the last day. So I'll continue with this one only. Okay. So now if you just open this device, you will see we have created four basically buttons in the last video. And using these four buttons, we can actually control uh, the four relays, or you can say the four sockets. Now in this video, what we want, we want to control the uh, sockets using these four buttons, but as well as we also want to control those uh, relays using the timer also. Okay, so we will give it a starting time and end time. And uh, in that way, the device, so in that way, the socket will be turned on and turned off. Okay, so I'll show you how you can do this. So the very first thing is uh, we have to create few more uh, virtual pins or virtual data streams. Okay, so at first I'll go here and go to like uh, edit dashboard. So like now I have all the all the like options okay to edit okay now in the uh, info we don't need to change anything metadata nothing in data stream we have to do few things okay now in the last video let me delete this one uh, we I, uh, so we haven't created this in the last video so in the last video we have created this four virtual pins okay and this the data type as you can see they are integers because we were like we were sending zero or one zero means we want to turn off the device one means we want to turn on the device this was the overall thing now in this video we want to send the time using the uh, blink blink app okay or the web dashboard whatever it is okay and why we want to send the time because how it is work is like for example so let's say i want to turn my socket on at 12 pm so I will send a time uh, through this Blink app that, hey, I want to, uh, I want to like what I can say. So we will send a time, like let's say 12 p.m. That time will be sent to the code. And then in the code, we have to write the code in such a way that in that very particular time, we will do the operation. So operation means either we can turn it on, turn it off, or even if you're doing something else also that you can do. So from the app, we are only sending the time. If you remember, if you have used that time input or timer thing in Blink 1, it was completely different. In Blink 1, what was happening that in that very particular time, either you can make the pin high or make the pin low but in blink 2.0 it's completely different you can only send the time okay you can only send the time and then using that time you will receive in your code then you based on the time you do the operation okay so when you will see the code you will understand in a better way okay now here we have to create another four virtual uh, data streams so that we can send four different times okay because four different times why because four different well, here we have four different uh, virtual pins okay or i'll do one thing uh, instead of making it so much complicated i will just make two virtual So here we will make four uh, new virtual data streams so that we can send the times. Okay, so why four uh, data streams? Because here we have four pins. So we'll send four different times for each of the pins. Okay, 
now let me create a new data stream now this data stream thing you can also create in the app but i'm just showing you here you can also create it in the app site so you go to virtual pin and now we will create v4 very important thing is data type will be integer uh, sorry string why string because we are sending a time and here how the time will be sent is this is very important so let's say i want to send uh, 5 30 5 30 am this is what i uh, i want to send then what blink will send is blink will send in seconds so basically 5 into 60 into 60 so this is basically the so i have converted 5 hour into the seconds and then 5 30 30 minutes into 60 so this is so uh, 19800 this is the uh, what i can say second format so we have converted that time into seconds and this seconds value the blink uh, app will send to the code so now this thing you can say this thing can be also integer yes this thing can be also integer but still we are going to send through string so that's why we are going to the data type we are going to make is string okay default value we are not going to give anything and uh, bin will be v4 and create okay in the similar way we have to create another four uh, data stream so i'll make it uh, v5 it will be string i'll make one v6 again string and we'll make v7 okay so for the uh, so for four pins we have created four different uh, virtual uh, virtual data streams where the data type is string so that we can send four different times okay now here for different time so each time contains a start time and end time okay also you, you can only send start time if you want but like here i'll show you how to send both start time and end time okay now this is about creation of the uh, data stream now save and apply now this is the only change we have to create in the uh, website okay in the blink website all the other things we will do in the app only now we will look into the code so how we have to write the code so remember we have four virtual pins v0 to v3 which will basically turn on or turn off the relay and then we have created a, another four virtual data streams using which we are going to send a time now uh, so if uh, so now we have to go to the arduino site so in the ide and we have to create the code okay to write the code right now if you don't know how to install a library for blink or if you don't know how to connect node and all the thing please watch the last video in last video i have explained how to install a library how to select the board and port everything watch that video in this video i'm not going to show that again so we will simply so you have to i'll provide the link in the description you go to that link and you will get this code now you can simply copy this code so let me just copy it okay you will simply copy it and then you go to arduino and like the last video you go to file you go to example at the very bottom you go to uh, blink so here somewhere blink should be there uh, let me see where is blink yeah here is blink blink and then uh, blink it agent and then blink agent esp8266 okay as we are using node mcu if you're using usb32 you have to select that one and then here you just paste our code okay also make sure if you're watching this video maybe uh one year later in that case you also need to look into the firmware version and all that things because in, in that if the firmware get updated you have to also change these things so i'll tell you what things i will i have modified in the code so you can also compare the example code and our code okay now here i have uh, uncommented the use node mcu board now if you're using usb 30 uh, so use it 32 or like if you're using any other kind of board you need to uncomment that so use wemos d1 mini or something like that okay now another new thing we are using is ntp client and wi-fi udp these two things we are using in this video which we were not using in the previous one so how to install these things very simple you have to go to tools uh you have to not tools you have to go to sketch include library uh, and go to manage libraries and yeah here you get it so here you search for ntp uh, client and you will get it as you can see it's installed in my case now this is how you install the ntp client library now coming to wi-fi udp wi-fi udp comes with the esp8266 uh live esp8266 wi-fi library so if you already have installed it you will have wi-fi udp installed okay now why he, here we are using ntp client now the thing is uh you are setting a time in your uh, blink app so let's say 12 pm now you will get that time in your uh, node mcu in our case but you also need to get the current time 
so that you can compare the blink time with the current time and if they are equal then only you will turn on or turn off the relay okay now how you get the current time so one way is either you can use a real time clock module okay and if you don't want to use that in that case we can use ntp server so from ntp server we will get our current time now how you will get it so here as you can see we are uh, we are creating a ntp udp object now here we are here we are uh, creating a variable called utc offset in seconds now this is what this is basically your utc offset okay so for example for india it is uh, utc plus 530 uh, 530 okay so utc time so if you search for utc time utc time india so how it is utc plus 530 okay so basically now this thing you have to convert into seconds so in our case 530 so i have to do like 5 into 60 seconds into 60 uh, sorry 60 minutes and then into 60 seconds plus 30 30 into 60 seconds okay so 19800 so that's why i have put this value so this is basically the utc offset so in your case based on your country you have to find out your utc offset and you have to put it here next we are creating uh, we are creating a time client uh, where we are passing basically our uh, ntp uh, the ntp url ntp of uh, in, sorry utc offset and the ntp udp object okay now the client has been time client has been created now from this time client object we are going to get our current time okay how we will get it i'll show you now again we are creating four pins here for, to control the relay so 16 5 4 10 why this pins i have explained in the last video here we are creating eight variables for the eight uh, like for the four sockets so start time once end time one for the socket one start time two end time two socket two socket three socket four in this way we are creating eight variables next here we are defining the pin set output and also we are initially making the pins high because in my relay whenever i make the pins high then the relay will be turned off when i make the pins low the relay will be turned on here we are starting the time client and also we are beginning the blink agent okay now here the virtual pin 0 1 2 and 3 you, you already know so basically here we are taking the input value and based on the value we are either making the relay pin high or relay pin low so we are turning on the relay or off the relay manually now from v4 to v7 we have to do that time client thing right so what we are doing is in from v4 we are going to get the start time and end time for our pin 1 or relay 1 okay so here i am getting the start time as param 0 so in param 0 i am going to get the start time and as in so i'm converting that into integer in end time i am going to get the param in param 1 i am going to get the end time and i'm converting that into integer now there is one catch why i have written this condition here is so whenever you will reset the so basically it's not that every time you are going to use that uh timer thing okay so if you reset the timer thing in that case the timer will give you zero 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 so you will get the start time as zero zero and end time as also uh zero zero okay now in that case what you need to do in uh, that case yeah basically uh, you are resetting it so you don't want your relay to work or you don't want to turn on the relay or off in a particular time so in that case we will make the start time end time very high okay so it is just to make so uh, no time can be as big as this one nine uh, six nines okay so this is just a very big value so that whenever you will reset your start time and end time uh basically you are not considering that we uh, that very particular timer to work okay so this is a edge case okay and similarly for v5 v6 and v7 we will similarly going to get the start time 2 end time 2 start time 3 end time 3 start time 4 end time 4 in all of them we are going to give the same condition that if both are start time and end time both are zero so that means what that means you don't want to uh use the relay or you, you don't want to use the timer to turn on turn on or turn off the relay okay now uh, after you have created a virtual pin so whenever whenever you are going to give any time in your app you are going to get the times here in the start time and end time now inside the void loop we are again doing the time client dot update so in each loop you will get the latest time we are extracting the hour minute and second from the time client and then here in the server time equal to we are calculating the time in seconds so 3600 into hours plus 60 into minutes and plus seconds we are getting the server time now like i said if the server time is equal to the start time of any relay you make the relay high it's and uh, so same similar for the start time two three or four so if that very particular time so the start time of any particular relay is equal to the current time then you start turn on the relay similarly if any particular start end time is equal to the server time then you 
make the pin high so you turn off the relay so these are some condition using which you will make the pin high and so relay high or low okay and uh, finally here you are doing the blink agent run okay so now i will just uh, upload the code in node mcu and then again i'll just explain you how the overall thing is working so before we upload the code we also need to change the template id and template name so let me just copy it so i'll just copy it from here okay and uh, one thing very important don't uh, copy the blink auth token we don't need to write that here just the template id template name will be enough and after that you go to tools you select the port and all the other things will be just the same and then you upload it and after the uploading will be done uh, we'll go to the app we are going to create the four timers in the app we have to create the widgets and then uh, we will test it out okay and here i'm not going to show you how to connect with the like how to connect with the uh, wi-fi and all the other setup that i have shown you in the previous video so you please refer to that one uh, in this video we are only going to create the timers and we'll see how it's working now the code has been uploaded successfully now you go to serial monitor and now here you will see now it will automatically get connected with a wi-fi so if previously you have set up the set up the same node mcu then it will automatically going to connect to the wi-fi okay and else you have to like find near device and just have to do the setup again but in my case it's already been connected and it also got connected to the blink cloud and it's now running now we will just go to the app and i'll just share my phone screen here just give me a moment So now as you can see here in the app we already have the sparklers test now i will just click on this previously we have created these four buttons now we need to add the timers okay now i'll just go here and here i will i will just click on the plus button and in that the very bottom i'll have the time input i'll just add one in the similar way i'll add another four time inputs okay and then i'll click one of them and here we have to set a data stream so we already have created for data stream for the first one i'll choose v4 and the time format we have to choose uh, hhmmss okay and then also we have to select here allow start stop input so if you want to send the start and stop time both you have to also allow this okay now click here similarly we have to do for all the other things so for v5 similarly we'll choose ss and click on this similarly for this one v6 the our s In this way we are done now and uh, now we can just go back now our now as you can see it's all done okay now to test uh, now to test we can do one thing just give me a moment just to test here i'll just show you so for example uh, here we are getting the start time and time so i'll do one thing i will just serial print i'll do serial print ln the start time just to understand to show you how it's working start time one and similarly i'll do serial dot print print ln the end time so now again i'll just upload it Now this one you don't need to do i'm just showing it here to show you like how it's working okay and how the overall time input actually works but uh, for you the previous code will be just fine so as you can see it's done so now we'll just go to the serial monitor and as you can see it's connecting it's connected to the wi-fi and now let's yeah now it's connected to the cloud so now what we'll do in the app side we'll just uh, change the time so currently it's 10 12 so i'll just set it at 10 uh, 13 and then this one i'll change as 10 14 
and whenever I press OK, you will see you will receive the seconds here. So seven nine nine eight zero and eight double zero four zero. These two are basically uh, the so basically these are the second. So if you see twenty two thirteen zero zero zero. So if you convert it to seconds, you are going to get this one. And twenty two fourteen zero zero. If you convert this into seconds, you are going to get this one. Okay. And from the server side also. So if you print the server time also, you are going to get similar. So you are also going to get the server time as in seconds format. So then we will just compare the server time with the start time and end time, and then based on the uh, condition, we are going to make it low or high. Okay, this is how the overall thing is working. Now let me show you. Now I'll just connect the Node MC with the relays, and I'll show you how it's working. Okay. So now, as you can see here, uh, now I have turned on the system, and uh, we have uh, basically made the whole thing in the last video. So if you don't know how the connections are here, so you can refer to that one. Now, uh, now I'll just go to here and for the first pin. So as you can see, we can simply turn it on and off using the switches. All the four relays you can turn on and turn off. I think you can see the lights in the relay. Okay. Now I'll just go to the first timer. Now it's ten fifteen, and I'll just make the timer at ten sixteen, and I'll do it and I'll close and stop it at ten seventeen, and then whenever I press OK, now I have set the timer. Now let's just wait and see in the next two minutes. So when will be ten sixteen? The relay should be turned on, and when it will be ten seventeen, the relay should be turned off. So let's see if it works or not. So as you can see, it's ten sixteen, and the relay has been turned on. Now as you can see, it's ten seventeen, and relay has been turned off. So in this way, the timer will work, and every day it is going to work. Okay. Also, you can actually if you go to settings, and if you go on, you can also choose allow day or week selection, allow sunset sunlight selection, allow time time zone selection. All those things you can do. So you can try those things. And in general, if you don't set any of them, then this timer is going to work all like every day in the same time. It will be turned on, and same time it will be turned off. And if you want to reset it, you click on it, and you click on reset. Similar to stop, click on reset and press OK. And now it will be resetted to zero. And if you, as you remember, so if you make both of them zero, in that case the timer thing will not work because we have set that in our code. Okay, so in this way the timer is going to work. Okay, guys. So this is all about this video, and I hope you have learned quite a lot of things from this one. And we are working on many more projects, which uh, we are going to publish the videos very soon. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in the very next video.